Okay, in this video we're checking out a Flat Sky receiver here. It's called the uh, FLI 14 Plus. It's got the uh, dual diversity antennas. And I did a review on the FLI 14, which has got just the single micro antenna. Uh, and the board was a little bit smaller if you want to see that review. Put a card in the corner here, you can check out that video. I had pretty good range on that one, but um, someone suggested that they would like to see a review on this one here with the diversity antennas. And supposedly uh, we'll get more range out of this one versus the micro receiver. Now there were reports and I saw some people complaining about this receiver and the uh, one with the single antenna saying that they were getting fail safes like within 10 meters like you know, 10 feet away so really really close. Not sure what's up with that. Um, I wasn't having any fail safe problems with the one with the single antenna. Uh, within most places I fly 200 meters or so that's no problem. And in this one here I went uh, to a park about uh, 250 meters to 300 meters away, somewhere in there, about a thousand feet away. Um, and actually I had more problems with my video than the control range. I ended up putting a, I've got two of these here, I ended up putting a, this receiver on my uh, SBC Maker S125 and I just put up the antennas here like so, a typical V shape here for best reception. And I got uh, pretty far, about 250, 300 meters away, but my video transmitter seemed to be ha struggling. Um, with this particular video transmitter only goes up to 100 milliwatts, and then as I was going through trees, uh, this antenna here, this whip antenna with the uh, 100 milliwatts had trouble penetrating those trees. So I might have to do another longer range test somewhere down the road, uh, maybe uh, on, on, on a different uh, quad with a different video transmitter. In a different location to get a better idea what the, the the I guess the ultimate range of this receiver is. I've heard reports of this receiver going uh, more more than a kilometer uh, in, in basically in, in areas with with good RF uh, reception. So not sure what the problem is with people having bad reception on this. Obviously, there's you know there was always the potential for user error. Maybe their antennas aren't properly placed uh, if they put them on places where uh, the, antenna might get, might, the antennas might get blocked, that could be an issue as well. So, uh, so those are things to keep in mind. Now this is this receiver here is very similar to another receiver I also reviewed um, a while back. This one here is called the FLI-T10 uh, FLI receiver. You can see that it's also a diversity antenna, two antennas. The boards are very similar looking here. You can see they're probably based off of, well, this one is probably based off of this one, uh, the one on the left. Uh, the one on the left does not have the uh, RSSI on channel 14, which is what the, the FLI 14 Plus has. So these newer versions of this uh, FlySky receiver does output RSSI onto channel 14 of the uh, the receiver, and you can pick it up on your OSD and put that on your OSD, which is what I did. Now this one here, you can also get RSSI through the, uh, basically it's like a trick where you uh, set up a channel on your radio and um, it sends it back to the receiver and then you can put on your OSD. It's a, there's a lot, there's actually latency involved in that one. And this one here, the FLI 14 Plus, is kind of like the way the XM Plus is set up on the FreeSky system. It just comes out of the receiver on channel, so there isn't any uh, transmission back and forth between the receiver and the radio uh, to get your RSSI on your OSD. So, uh, if you were to get this receiver, I'd recommend this one over this one here. Uh, there's some telemetry features that, that are involved here with a sensor and all that, and other sensors you can get with this receiver. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure whatever happened to that, uh, I guess, that system. Or I thought more stuff was going to come up for this, but it never did. So I think this receiver is kind of outdated and useless uh, for FlySky people. I wouldn't recommend getting this receiver anymore. I would recommend this one now over the old, old system and it's easier to get RSSI on this one anyway so uh, all you have to do is go to beta flight uh, and it's on the receiver tab I believe and you just set RSSI to channel 14 which will be aux 10 in beta flight configurator and then you'll, you'll you just uh, obviously you'll have to turn on the element in your OSD and then you'll be able to see it on your OSD what the RSSI is okay so here's the uh, weight of the receiver it's coming in at uh, about 1.7 grams and you also do get a connector here and also some heat shrink and this little micro connector here just plugs in like so on this little port here and I kind of wish that they 
didn't use the micro connector in this one. I would would have rather have seen solder pads, but there are some pads here on the back. But it doesn't look like uh, these are corresponding to any of the, the signal uh, wires here. There's one for ground and one for 3.3 volts, but there's nothing for 5 volts in the power of the receiver. And I don't see anything on the other side as well. So that's kind of a downside, I think. I think it would be possible to remove the connector completely and just use the little tiny solder pads there. Uh, if you're really good at soldering and then obviously you want to uh, do a good solder job there and then use some like liquid electrical tape or hot glue or something to, to basically hold the wires on. I think that would be better for long term security because eventually this connector here will get loose and then it could vibrate out and stuff like that. Uh, it's, that's a potential possible uh, problem down the road. Um, but um, the other thing that I can see here is that the antennas are not on micro FL connectors. They're just uh, soldered on and there's a little bit of hot glue here uh, holding them in place. So if you do end up damaging an antenna and uh, need to replace it, you'll have to remove the hot glue and then desolder the antenna and get a replacement antenna and solder that back on again. So it could be an issue for people that don't know how to do that. Anyway, I'll go ahead and show you my uh, flight demo for this uh, at the park and you'll see the overlay of the OSD with the RSSI and how far away I can go. Now obviously I didn't get very far on 100 milliwatts of video. My video range was actually much worse than my control range on this. And so I'm going to have to do probably another test in the future with something else maybe that has 600 milliwatts or potentially something more and maybe with better antennas in a different location. I may even uh, do this, uh, this test on something that has GPS so I can do uh, return to home in case they get a fail safe and then we can see what the maximum uh, distance is. I, I don't think I can go much more than uh, you know, maybe uh, 500 or 600 kilometers in the area that I live so I may not even get a fail safe at that distance so we'll have to see. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Okay, so at the beginning of this flight here, I'm just going to be doing some uh, nearby flying just to get, get, get an idea of what the RSSI is doing. And I'm not really flying that far away here, probably about 100 meters away and um, anywhere between 95 RSSI and about 80. So it doesn't really vary too much here and I have pretty good video because there's nothing in my way. And the only thing that, that is uh, possibly affecting the video here is because I'm flying kind of low to the ground so you see a little bit of a breakup there uh, but you'll see more breakup as I go to the other side of those trees on the far side over there Okay, so here I'm on the other side of these trees and about 260 to 70 meters away I'm getting some pretty poor video reception. You see a lot of breakup in the video and my RSSI is dropping to the 30s and 40 percent, uh, possibly because I was low to the ground as well as, as well as on the other side of the trees. But as soon as I get above the trees, uh, my video does improve and my RSSI improves as well. So I try to stay uh, above these trees here to give myself a clear line of sight to give me and I have a better idea of what the RSSI is doing and I can get over here about 250 meters away and and I'm above the trees and I'm getting about 50 yeah 40 to 50 percent RSSI here and then as I drop below the tree line again you can see the video breaking up so I think this receiver can definitely go further than what I was going here just didn't uh, just didn't trust my video it was a pretty bad breakup um, pretty sure that if I have clear line of sight uh, and, and good video transmission I could probably go uh, at least twice as far 500 meters away I think that's what is advertised as the range of this receiver so I don't think that uh, flying at a park like this is going to be any issue in terms of range or control or fail safe uh, at least for this receiver under these types